Angular's reactive form module allows you to build reliable yet complex forms throughout your application. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to use the reactive form module along with the Firebase real-time database. What we're building is just a simple form for classified ads. Rather than use a traditional form submit button, we're going to update the form in the database anytime a value changes. In my opinion, this provides a better user experience, and it also prevents data from being lost if the page is refreshed. So what is a reactive form? Basically, it's just a form that's been defined in the component TypeScript to give it a synchronous flow of data. This gives you better control over logic and validation, as well as making testing a lot easier. The other type of form is a template-driven form, which uses ng-model to build the form in the component HTML. The benefit is that you can create forms with less code. However, the drawback is that they're harder to maintain, especially as the form grows larger and more complex. So a good rule to follow is if you're building a big, complex form, you should probably go with the reactive form module. Reactive forms are kept in their own module, so we'll need to import that in whichever module we plan on using it in. In this example, we import the reactive forms module into our app module and then add it to the import section. Now we can start building the ad service that will get data from Firebase for our classified ads. I'm also going to create an ad listing class which will populate some default data whenever we start a new ad from scratch. So our classified ads will have a title, some content, a price, and an image. From there we can inject the Angular Fire database and then we'll create a function that will create a new ad in the database. This function will push a new ad listing to a Firebase list observable, but instead of returning that full list observable, we'll just grab the key and then return the newly created object as an object observable. You can call key after you call push, and that'll return the push key from Firebase. Then you can just pass that key to another object observable query. Then we'll create another function that will just update an existing object in the database with new data. Now let's go into the component TypeScript. We will import the add service and also form group, form builder, and validators from Angular forms. Then we'll set up a variable for add, which is just the Firebase object observable, and also add form, which will be a form group. Then we inject our add service and the form builder in the constructor. The way our feature works is that when the user clicks the button to create a new ad listing, it will save some default data in the database and then allow them to edit it from there. The next step is to build the form itself. So we create a function called build form, and then we define the add form variable using the form builder group function, and we pass it a bunch of attributes that have validators attached to them. These validators are based on constraint validations in JavaScript, and you can attach as many as you want to each attribute. In order to sync our data up with Firebase, we need to subscribe to the object observable, and then we'll populate this reactive form with that value by calling the patch value method on it. The only other function we need in the component is an event handler that will save the new data to Firebase anytime a form value changes. I also add a conditional statement here to see if the form is valid, and if it's not valid, we just return so we can't add invalid data to the database from the front end. You should also add backend database validation rules in Firebase just to make sure your data is 100% secure. In the HTML, the first thing we'll do is create a preview of the ad, which just will take the various attributes and apply the async pipe as well as the attribute we want to show. All pretty basic stuff here. There's a lot of HTML to get through here, so be sure to check out the link in the description to get the full code used in this lesson. You add reactive forms to the HTML by binding the form group to an HTML form itself. From there, you can start adding form inputs to it, and the important part here is that when you add an input, you add the form control name with the attribute that it's controlling. So in other words, this form input will control the title on our classified ad. And whenever this value changes, it will update the Firebase database. Then we use ng class to apply either a red border when the form is not valid or a green border when this form attribute is valid. We get the validity state by calling addForm.get with the attribute we want and then valid, which will return either true or false. We also wanna check for the dirty state because we don't want the form to have a bunch of red borders when it's first loaded. The end result is the toggling of red and green classes when the form value is empty. We can also use this to display helpful messages to the user when a form value is invalid. In this case, if the title's missing, we'll show a message that says title is required. 
We can follow the same exact approach for every other form input. And again, I post the code on angularfirebase.com if you want to check out the entire thing. Now, going back into the app, you can see that when we update the form, it also updates the Firebase database after every form change event occurs. If you want a more traditional form experience, you could just add a button here and then fire the update function whenever the user clicks that button. That's it for reactive forms with Angular 4 and Firebase. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions or if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.